just come my way wherever I go. Hard luck is there to stay. Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always coming my way. I do want to point out that everything that we talk about here in this video is in no way a reflection of how Jessica and I feel on this subject. We're just documenting history, walking history, history that we feel needs to be shown. You shouldn't forget. For today's video, we're covering a topic that's a little hard to talk about for some people. Uh, to be honest, whenever I first found out about this, it was in a news clipping that I found online. Not much information about it. I was a little apprehensive about covering it because of how controversial it is. With that being said, it is history. It did happen. It's very sad. It's very tragic. It's very messed up. I'm not gonna show any pictures. There's not gonna be any graphic images. They are online if you wanna see them. I'm not gonna show them here. But I'm gonna do my best to just follow what happened back in the early 80s here in Los Angeles, what was known as the Los Angeles fetus disposal scandal. In a way, it kind of feels like it was covered up, but it wasn't. It just really wasn't as covered as well as it probably should have been. Well, I mean, Ronald Reagan, the president at the time, called it a national tragedy. Well, it, it, like I said, it's a hard story. Our story concerns abortion and began, strangely enough, in this relatively peaceful suburb of Los Angeles. Malvin Weisberg, a pathologist, owned a large storage container which he kept in his backyard when he failed to make the final two payments, it was repossessed. Um, we made a decision to repossess it because his uh, check did not clear the bank. And so we sent the truck out to pick up the container. I rolled out there and uh, took the box up and uh, started pulling it up. And uh, it, it was so heavy, it, just, uh, it broke, the, broke the winch and we couldn't get it off the trailer so we had to leave it on the trailer because it was too heavy so i was asked by nick to have a crew go down and unload the container at the other yard i got a radio call that uh from ron gillette the foreman and he said the men were throwing up and there was something really wrong one of them fell down and hit me right in front of my feet and it was opened up and there it was, it was, a, it was a mutilated body. And the more closer I looked at it, it was a human body. And when I came to work the following day, I, uh, I saw it myself, I couldn't believe it. And it just, you know, just look me babies, you know, it was just all torn pieces. The heads chopped off, arms, legs, you know, it's just, uh, it just makes you sick to see something like that. Well, it really, it's just, you know, it makes you want to cry when you see something like that. Starting at the very front of this container, it was just wall clear to the ceiling and clear to the sides, filled with them. I really don't want to witness it again. Not, not what I saw. When it was all said and done, over 16,500 fetuses were pulled from that shipping container, as well as from the garage of Malvin Weisberg's home. Almost 200 of them were over 20 weeks gestation. I think like 193 or 196. And the oldest one, believe it or not, was close to 30 weeks gestation. So we asked for an investigation by the district attorney in the coroner's office. We found approximately 190 were over 20 weeks of age. I think some as, as long as, uh, as old as 25, 27 weeks. When Jessica and I moved to California, we rented one of those U-Haul boxes, kind of like a small shipping container, and we, we packed it to the brim 
with all of our belongings. I'm talking, we put everything we owned in this shipping container and there, was n there, wasn't, a there wasn't enough room for an ant to breathe if they wanted to. When we got here and when we opened that shipping container door, our stuff fell out and all of the furniture that we put in it was broken. I'm talking, we had to buy all brand new furniture. And the reason being, when you pack something that tight, you need to allow room for it to expand and get jostled around. If you don't, it'll snap, it'll crack. The same thing with earthquakes and securing uh, cabinets and televisions. You gotta secure them, but you gotta leave a little play. This shipping container with the fetuses was packed to the brim. And whenever somebody said that when they opened the doors, it all came crashing out, I believe it. Now we're in this odd fellow cemetery today because this is where the remains of the estimated 16,500 fetuses are buried. A lot of people, it pissed a lot of people off. There was a lot of controversy, uh, a lot of controversy. Like I said, Ronald Reagan called it a national disaster and even wrote something that was read here at the service. But it's right here. In memory of the 16,500 precious unborn buried here October 6th, 1985. It's crazy. Now, after reading the stone, you might be asking yourself one question. If they found the shipping container in 1982 and the stone reads October 6, 1985 is whenever the precious unborn were buried here, how come it took so long? Well, there was a lot of people who were, a lot of organizations who were very unhappy with what happened, of course, and even more so unhappy with what the plans were to deal with them. Now, after hearing that, it's pretty messed up, right? But here's basically what it came down to. There were organizations who believed that the remains were tissue and should be cremated, not buried. And then there are organizations who believe that they were people who should be buried and not cremated. We had a court order that we would allow us to bury these infants, being a humane act. And the ACLU comes in again saying that uh, this is just uh, tissue. Uh, we want to incinerate them. And there's no need for a burial, we ought, because if you had a burial, somehow that's going to create a problem. Problem for whom? See what I mean? For a couple years, this went on, as well as trying to determine the cause of death for some of them. I think that they performed autopsies on 20 or 40 of the fetuses. Uh, Mr. Antonovich contacted Mr. Gutierrez. Glenn Wong is a funeral director for a major Los Angeles mortuary. Uh, ask us uh, to go ahead and handle the burial of the fetuses. How I came involved was uh, they were asking if it were possible to have anyone photograph these fetuses and I so happened to be also a photographer. How many fetuses were actually involved in the autopsies? Uh, there were approximately about 40, 44 uh, if I'm correct. And why were the autopsies performed? Uh, they were to find out why uh, or what was the reason of the cause of death. Now, I've seen some of these fetuses and believe me, they were apart. There were some where the uh, eyes were bulging and some where the uh, chest cavity was ripped open. I do remember one was where I saw a hand and a feet all apart. So it was kind of like the hands were intact, the feet were intact, and everything else was more like uh, just a little potpourri little of everything and that's that was it that kind of turned me now th this is something that boggles my mind now keep in mind the 20 foot long shipping container was filled all right by the time that they put the 16,500 estimated bodies here remains here they were basically they buried six pine coffins filled with the remains right here six pine coffins. I don't understand how uh, a 20 foot shipping container condenses down to a, you know, pine boxes, only six of them. I read five, I read six. We're going to go with six. Man, sometimes history is good. Sometimes it's bad. 
Sometimes you want to remember the history, sometimes you don't. Regardless, it's history. It happened. You should just never forget. Right now I'm walking down Khalifa Street in the Woodland Hills area of Los Angeles. And immediately, as soon as I turned on this road, I seen a mixture of old houses as well as new houses. Meaning, there's been a lot of construction, a lot of developments over here. Now just by looking at this house at 23510 Khalifa Road in Woodland Hills, it looks original. It looks like it's one of the older houses here. Can't get too close to it. But this was the home of physician Malvin Weisberg. Yeah, the guy who had the, the 20 foot shipping container at his house filled with fetuses, as well as in his garage. Crazy, right? Here's a little closer look at the house. In order to find this house, I had to do a lot of digging. Again, there's not many articles that talk about what happened here, but there's one article I found that mentions Khalifa Street. Using that, I was able to dig deeper and deeper and find the actual house address. Now, again, those articles, there's a few different discrepancies as to where the shipping container was. Some say that it was behind the house and others say that it was in a vacant lot next to the house. Now walking the street and looking at the neighboring houses, you can tell that they're new compared to this one. So we're gonna go ahead with the theory that the shipping container was in the lot next to the house. And with that being said, right about the center of your screen, that's the garage where some of the fetuses were found, which means in theory, just looking at it and walking history, that right over here, is where the shipping container would have been. Now I remember reading an article that says it was just slightly down the street and there's a different driveway that went up into the yard. Again, no house there. Something about a flagpole But this is the only place that makes sense. And it's a newer building, that's for sure. Now in the title of this video, we have it listed as a true crime, but technically it's not really a true crime in your traditional sense. It still is a crime. The shipping container that was here on the property was storing the fetuses illegally. Per California law, especially at the time, they should have been disposed of properly and they weren't. Now how they found the shipping container. Weisberg missed the last two payments. According to documents, he was paying $1,700 a month. He missed the last two payments. They came to get the shipping container and they were able to open it the very next day. And that's how it all began. That was in 1982. And it took until October 6th, 1985 to bury the unborn. I just noticed this. Right across the street from the house is a shipping container, almost exactly like the one Malvin Weisberg used. Crazy, right? So that should give you a sort of a, an idea, the scope of things. Let me go ahead and back up. It really is something else. And with that being said, thank you for joining us on another grim adventure, this time telling the story of the Los Angeles fetus disposal scandal of 1982. Very sad, very tragic, and very horrible story. Uh, had no idea that this was even here. I mean, I've done, my entire life I've done research on grim things here in the Los Angeles area, and then moving here, doing even more research, 
it wasn't until just the other day where I found a small newspaper article about this. It blows my mind. It only goes to show you really never know what's going on in your own backyard. You never know what you're going to find either. With that being said, happy Halloween. Wherever I come, I've had luck. It's come my way. Wherever I go, hard luck. Is that it's stay. Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always coming my way. 